Hello! In today's RKO Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. Headline number one comes from a cave on the coast uh, just north of Edinburgh, where a rescue operation has been underway to record uh, carvings on the wall before they're either lost to flooding or to a catastrophic landslide event. Now, th this actually involves uh, people who uh, you guys, those who watch these videos uh, frequently, will already have met. Uh, in particular, Joe, uh, Joanna Hambly, an archaeologist from St Andrews, um, the university, um, has actually been involved in this project uh, using, for example, drone technology, laser scanning technology, uh, exposure uh, to light from different angles to reveal undulation and contrast on the walls to really um, uh, get a, a brilliant millimetre scale, in fact down to actually 100 micrometres uh, in terms of scale. Um, uh, record of this cave before it's potentially lost. Um, in her words, we're throwing everything at it. There's a danger that we may lose these caves. Now the carvings actually are uh, for the most part Pictish. They do have some early Christian symbols for example, um, but the, the level of detail that they've man managed to achieve here is actually down to the point where you can actually see individual hammer strokes um, from the people who actually did the carvings. Um, the, this uh, this um, record will actually be going online, an online walkthrough of Jonathan's Cave will actually go, go live uh, this month. This will afford you access to, to those scans and give you an insight into, uh, into the remarkable detail that they've achieved. Um, uh, people um, uh, leading the project as well um, have gone on to say that, um, that, uh, that this is, is just it's important and it's exciting because it's, it's linked with um, obviously saving but also using cutting edge technology to do the saving. So um, wonderful stuff um, from uh, actually from Sharp, from the, the team who we've interviewed in the past. So well done. That's headline number one. Um, headline number two actually comes from the National Archives uh, in London, or down in London, where um, uh, around, no, so more than 150 files have been made public, they've been declassified and digitised, or rather they've been declassified for a long time, but they've been digitised and um, will be released uh, for public access. Um, these records um, actually record the important work of the secret services during the First World War. Uh, spies such as the famous Matahari, for example, um, and also um, uh, <laughs> um, um, missions where people were asked to, to observe scouts. Um, it, it, as just some of the things which are revealed from these records. Um, it's part of the First World War 100 program, and it's basically honouring the anniversary of the of the Great War, but also as well giving us new insights into what people were doing at the time. Um, to quote uh, Dr. Stephen Twigg, uh, the files in the National Archives collection reveal the importance of the security service in guarding the nation during the First World War. So a fascinating series of documents which have, which have been released to the public uh, domain. So again, well worth a look. Um, start, headline number three actually comes from Cambridge, where a PhD candidate, uh, Alison McIntosh, um, has uh, really actually uh, done some fascinating work examining bone density uh, on people as they take up farming. Um, she examined um, uh, bod uh, human remains from Central Europe um, from around about 5300 BC and noticed that there's a progressive deterioration in the strength of bones over time. This is due to a, a lack of, um, sorry, rather sorry, a decline in the, uh, the, 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 the exertion being put on uh, skeletons and human bodies uh, with the uptake of farming. Uh, a decline in mobility and also loading, um, apparently. Now, uh, mobility and lower limb loading in male agriculturalists actually just de declined far, uh, to a far greater extent than it did uh, with, um, in female agriculturalists, as it were. Um, and the, the, um, the, the analogy was made um, or rather a helpful analogy was made by studying uh, current Cambridge students. Undergraduates were observed, their bone density was compared to their lifestyle, and Macintosh um, said that male mobility loading um, among the earliest farmers, around 7,300 years ago, was on average near the level of today's student cross-country runners. Um, however, within just 3,000 years, average mobility had dropped to the level of those students rated as sedentary. Um, in other words, people who uh, work far too hard and don't do any rowing or running. 
which I have to say at the, at the moment includes me. So, um, so in nearly 3,000 years, they've gone from being really rather healthy, um, or rather, sorry, really rather um, uh, active and and having a skeleton which re which reflected that activity. Sorry, health is is the wrong word to use. Down to being um, uh, relatively sedentary people with a bone density that reflected that. Uh, a fascinating study um, which adds to the ongoing debate as to how and why people took on farming at the time. After all, if you're sedentary and you're not moving around, there's not an awful lot of other health and social issues that you have to deal with. Territory, uh, being close to or trying to get rid of, for example, human waste, uh, disease that comes with that, a reduced diet. Um, and this adds to that, to, that, to that debate in so much as, well, it's yet another argument against taking on farming. But uh, it also confirms that people did take on farming, and um, despite uh, the, these uh, these um, these well, neg negative effects, um, uh, people uh, lived with it and well still are farming. So it's it's a fascinating bit of research. It really adds to that whole conversation about the nature of what it means to become agricultural when you haven't been previously. That's headline number three. So there you go, there's my top three headlines for this week. Uh, for those news stories and all the other news stories from uh, the past few days, as ever, just check the links below in the video description. They're all there for your delectation and delight. Incidentally as well, one of uh, another news story that, well not so much news story, but another thing that, that caught my attention this week has been the sale um, of a replica of Stonehenge in Western Australia. Uh, if you've got um, quite a lot of money to spare uh, and you don't mind living well, actually, the house is lovely, actually. So if you don't, if you want a house that also has a very impressive, massive garden ornament, then uh, why not consider uh, ponying up the cash, as it were? <laughs> anyway, um, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy those news stories and have a great weekend. Mrs. Soup and I are hoping to head over to Vindolanda, the Roman fort on Hadrian's Wall, for our first visit of the year. So whatever you're up to, have a great weekend. Do enjoy these news stories. And as ever, do take care. Bye-bye.